three. Go and throttle up. You're looking at a live view of SpaceX's Mission Control, Hawthorne, California, as Dragon Endurance prepares for its departure from the International Space Station on its way back to planet Earth. It is Monday, March 11th, here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. We expect, to, we expect Dragon to push away from the space station at 8.20 a.m. Pacific time or 11.20 a.m. Eastern time with our Crew 7 astronauts, including NASA's Jasmine Mogbelli, European Space Agency astronaut Andreas Mogesen, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Satoshi Furukawa, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisa. Crew 7 spent 199 days in space, with 197 docked to the, state, to the space station. During this time, they completed 3,184 orbits of the Earth, traveling more than 84 million statue miles. The crew is currently suited, and the Dragon and station hatches are sealed in preparation for departure. Thanks for tuning in to watch the live coverage of Dragon completing its seventh official long duration mission from NASA's commercial crew program. Crew 7 is the seventh NASA crew rotation mission and ninth NASA flight with astronauts to the space station, and that's including Demo 2 and Crew 8, as part of NASA's commercial crew program. For those of you following along, you'll know that Crew 8 just arrived last week to the space station and will be taking over for Crew 7, who's now headed home. My name is Jesse Anderson, a manufacturing engineering manager here at SpaceX, and joining me today from NASA Communications is Sandra Jones. Thanks so much for having me, Jesse. It's really great to be here. Now, once Dragon departs space station today, the crew's flight home is expected to last around 18 and a half hours. Shortly after separation, Dragon will use its Draco engines to thrust away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers. Up to five of these departure burns will be required to increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. Dragon will also execute a phasing burn to lower its orbit and line the spacecraft up with its landing location. The major moments on the trip home are deorbit, then entry and landing, which cover all operations after the final departure maneuver. In that time, trunk separation, closure of the nose cone, a deorbit burn, deployment of the drogue and main parachutes, and then finally splashdown off the coast of Florida will all take place, at which point our teams will recover Jasmine, Andy, Satoshi, and Constantine. Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida on Tuesday, March 12th at 5.50 a.m. Eastern Time or 2.50 a.m. Pacific Time, followed by the crew getting picked up at sea by one of SpaceX's recovery vessels. Today on board the International Space Station is the Expedition 70 crew, being led by Roscosmos cosmonaut and current Space Station commander Ole. Oleg Kononenko. Of course, just like its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, requiring no action from the crew on board. NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara helped the crew members prepare for departure today and will also be watching from the cupola. But the prime departure monitoring role falls on Jasmine Mogbelli from inside Dragon. Mission controls in Houston and Hawthorne will also help to back them up. But for now, let's go over to Leah Cheshire at the Johnson Space Center to talk a bit more about how the station crew have been preparing to send the crew home and what we can expect from here until Dragon departs from station. Leah? Thanks, Sandra, and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room here in Houston, Texas. We are monitoring the departure of Crew 7 this morning, and teams are standing by, again, for the Go No Go poll coming up here shortly. Um, and uh, we are working and monitoring. Earlier this morning, we saw the hatch closure of Crew Dragon Endurance. All four crew members are now inside, suited up, and getting ready for their ride home. Of course, we will remain in these integrated Endeavor operations SpaceX. during the time. The ground is go for undocking and departure. Undock sequence start is at 1515 Zulu, and our final configurations for undock are complete and nominal. Please confirm you are ready and that visors are down prior to the sequence start. Prior to the sequence start. 
correct. And there are copies all. We will be prepared at one five one five and we'll give you a call when visors are down. Copy Dragon. Sorry for the miss on the call sign there. And then finally, GPS2 related cautions may be expected and they do not require a crew action. So we're continuing to hear some communications from the ground team here in Mission Control Houston, as well as the core, the crew operations resource engineer in Hawthorne, California. The Capcom here today is Amy Dill, and the flight director on console in Mission Control Houston is Judd Freeling. So since Crew 8's arrival just last week, we've had a busy week during this handover. Now, over the last several days, the astronauts worked to unpack Dragon, uh, worked to pack Dragon, I should say, full of the cargo that will return with them. And along with the crew, Dragon's going to be bringing back some of that critical science, uh, including samples for continuing human research, additionally some hardware and other items. Earlier today, Jasmine Mobelli and Andy Mogensen worked to move some of the cold bags uh, and the polar freezers. These store cold research samples and scientific experiments. Those are now in Dragon Endurance underneath the crew's seats. All of this critical science and cargo is offloaded after we get the crew out of the uh, spacecraft following splashdown. Those scientific samples will be sent to researchers for final analysis within just a few hours of that return. The crew also took some time to get into their SpaceX suits this morning. They uh, had those unpacked and are now ready for the journey home, totally suited and seated. Since getting the hatches closed, all four astronauts are in their seats. We're standing by for undocking. And additionally, teams at NASA and SpaceX have been preparing for undocking. They've been conducting checkouts of the Dragon spacecraft and space station systems. Now, one of the teams, one of the items that these teams look for uh, for these splash on opportunities are weather opportunities. Opportunities. We want to make sure that the crew aboard Dragon and the teams who recover them have the best conditions possible for a safe and speedy pickup. We've got a final no go slash no go call poll coming up in just a few minutes. That go no go poll will give us an opportunity for both NASA and SpaceX teams to make their final call for Dragon to depart station. That's one of the many checkpoints during the return that will continue all the way up until just before the deorbit burn. That gives the mission managers multiple chances to assess the weather at the splashdown zones and make sure everything is lining up before Dragon departs. Now again, we've been watching weather over the last few days. We have a great opportunity tomorrow morning, uh, and these astronauts, we, we expect to see them splash down early tomorrow morning, less than 24 hours from now. Again, we are live here in Mission Control Houston, just standing by for that go, no-go poll. Again, all four astronauts and one Three astronauts, one cosmonaut are in Dragon Endurance, uh, still docked to the International Space Station, expecting undocking to come at about 11.20 a.m. Eastern Time, 10.20 a.m. Central Time. And it sounds like that go, no go poll that we were looking for has been completed. We are in joint operations until the spacecraft has exited the approach ellipsoid. Uh, this is a two by two by four kilometer sphere around the International Space Station that teams in mission control use to monitor arriving and departing vehicles to the space station. So these teams are both continuing to monitor the flight together. Uh, but over the last six months, I wanna take a look at something. Crew 7 has, has had what I like to call an astronaut's eye 
eye view, and they've taken some pictures to share with us. So these are from the space station. The space station is 250 miles above Earth. They're too far away to make things out like cars, people, or buildings, but they can see other landmarks around the world. And they have these long camera lenses they can use to help zoom in on some, fam some familiar sites of our home planet. So on March 5th, the Expedition 70 crew captured Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and its suburbs just across the Guanabara Bay. Toward the bottom is the eight and a quarter mile long President Costa e Silva Bridge linking Rio de Janeiro with the city of Niteroi. In the next image from March 2nd, you can see the San Pedro River snake through the center of some rugged mountainous terrain in Bolivia, nearly splitting the image in half. And finally, our last photo for the morning, the crew captured the city lights of the Denver, Colorado area on February 29th. If you look in the top left, you'll see an aurora which crowns a portion of Canada. And of course, we do get imagery from satellites that uh, take photos of Earth, but the International Space Station is really unique in these viewing opportunities because astronauts astronauts and cosmonauts can tell scientists on the ground what they're observing and what stands out in real time. So what we're observing here in Mission Control Houston today, again, Crew 7 undocking scheduled for 1020 a.m. Central Time. With that coming up in just about 10 minutes, I'm going to send it back to Jesse and Sandra in Hawthorne. Thanks, Leah. And those pictures were pretty awesome. It's always cool to see uh, what the astronauts' point of view is when they're on the International Space Station. Yeah, absolutely. My favorite was the one of Denver, Colorado. You know, Denver is the mile-high city, and right now the International Space Station is actually flying 263 okay, miles. SpaceX copies. Pfizer's down. And so that call out up to the commander of Dragon, Jasmine Mugbelli, a NASA astronaut, just letting the ground know that her visors are down as well as her crewmates. Um, that's one more milestone that they check off uh, ahead of undocking here. We are expecting undocking um, at 8.20 a.m. Pacific this morning. So coming up here um, in less than 10 minutes. And again, at the moment, Dragon is in its final configuration before undocking, and we've already had the go, no, go poll, and we are go for proceeding with the undocking. And just like during its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, which requires no action from the crew on board. Departure is typically a little bit faster and easier since the crew doesn't have to stop at any of the waypoints, like when we see a vehicle arrive and dock to the International Space Station. Once the undocking sequence is complete, Dragon will use its Draco engines to thrust away from the station in a series of five departure burns, which are carefully choreographed maneuvers that will increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. From there, a phasing burn will place Dragon on a trajectory back to Earth. So again, we did have that go, no-go poll uh, take place a few minutes ago. Everything is on time and going smoothly, looking like we're going to have a great undocking this morning. So again, we are uh, just a few minutes away from our targeted undock this morning. Uh, we're uh, planning to have that undock occur at 8.20 a.m. Pacific. And the journey home uh, will be not quite 24 hours, uh, but the crew will splash down off the coast of Florida early tomorrow morning. Before they depart the International Space Station, let's take a moment to get to know the crew we're bringing home tomorrow. Lieutenant Colonel Jasmine Mogbelli hails from Baldwin, New York, and earned a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and a master's degree in aerospace engineering from the Naval Postgraduate School. She also graduated with honors from the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School as an AH. 1W Super Cobra pilot and Marine Corps test pilot, she has flown more than 150 combat missions. In all, she accrued 2,000 hours of flight time in more than 25 different aircraft. Undock sequence commanded.
And we did just hear that call up to the crew that the undock sequence has begun. So to continue talking about the commander of Dragon today, uh, NASA astronaut Jasmine Mugbelli. Umbilicals are demated, nominal. And we are hearing that the umbilicals have retracted between Dragon and the International Space Station. So the next milestone that we'll be looking for is for those sets of hooks to uh, fully retract. There's two sets of six hooks, so 12 hooks in all. And once those hooks um, have separated, then there will be a short thruster firing that occurs at the Draco engines to help push Dragon back away from the International Space Station. So we are in a night pass right now, so we may not have uh, the best views of that undocking as it occurs, but we will continue, of course, to provide live updates as we hear them. And so back to Jasmine. Um, in all, she has accrued 2,000 hours of flight time in more than 25 different aircraft. At the time of her selection as an astronaut, Mugbelli was testing H-1 helicopters and serving as the quality assurance and avionics officer for VMX-1. She's also the proud mom of twin girls. With this mission, she will have logged an estimated 199 days in space during her first flight, including six hours and 42 minutes during her first spacewalk. Today, she is the commander of Crew 7. Sitting next to Jasmine is pilot Andreas Mogesen. This is Mogesen's second trip to the space station. His first was as the flight engineer for the ESA IRIS mission in 2015. He was born in Copenhagen, Denmark, and graduated with an international baccalaureate from the Copenhagen International School, a master's degree in aeronautical engineering from Imperial College London, and a doctorate in aerospace engineering from the University of Texas at Austin. In 2015, Mogesen became the first Danish person to go to space and currently is serving as the European astronaut liaison officer to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. With this mission, he will have logged 209 days in space across two flights. In the role of mission specialist is Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Satoshi Furukawa. Furukawa's interest in space began when he was just five years old and saw the Apollo 11 moon landing on TV. He was also a fan of the Japanese... First set of hooks are open and nominal. And we did just hear the call out that that first set of hooks has successfully opened. Everything is going on track perfectly smoothly this morning. Again, there's two sets of hooks, each in a group of six, so 12 in all. Um, so halfway through, and we'll continue to monitor those hooks uh, opening as we continue to tell you about the rest of the crew. So. Furukawa was also a fan of the Japanese TV space hero Ultra 7. His professional career began as a medical doctor, but after seeing a news report about Japan auditioning for new astronauts to do science experiments on the space station, he decided to apply. He was selected by the National Space Development Agency of Japan to be an astronaut candidate in 1999, and his first mission to the space station was as flight engineer for Expedition 28 and 29 that launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in June 2011. Following this mission, he will have logged 366 days in space across his two trips. And to round it out, mission specialist Konstantin Borisov was selected to be a cosmonaut in 2018, and this was his first trip to space. He has a Bachelor of Economics from the Russian Academy of Economics, a Master of Science and Operations Research and Systems Analysis from Warwick University in Coventry, UK, and a Master in Aircraft Life Support Systems from the Moscow Aviation Institute. He has worked for companies such as Volvo and the Boston Consulting Group. He's also an experienced free diving instructor and an international free diving judge. He will end this mission logging 199 days in space. And we are just about a minute away from the expected undocking time. We're currently in the procedures to uh, undock. We've already um, decoupled the umbilicals from the Dragon spacecraft and the space station. And the first set of six hooks of the 12 total hooks have been confirmed. All hooks are open. And so we did just get that call that that second set of six hooks is now open. So to continue to walk us through the separation of Dragon from the International Space Station, let's toss it over to Leah Cheshire in Mission Control, Dragon Houston. separation confirmed.
Thanks, Sandra. We just heard that separation is confirmed. The International Space Station and Dragon flying 261 statute miles over Hawaii at three at 10.20 a.m. Central Time, 11.20 a.m. Eastern Time. Just received confirmation of a nominal depart, depart zero, zero burn. burn. complete and nominal. Depart zero burn being a very short burn using uh, the service section Draco thrusters to break some stiction from Dragon and the International Space Station officially marking its departure. We are standing by for depart burn one, which will increase the opening rate between the spacecraft and the station. Again, at this time, the crew are all suited up and in their seats. They'll have an opportunity to get out of those suits shortly and prepare for their longer ride home. Again, the departure of Dragon Endurance this morning coming at 10.20 a.m. Central Time, 11.20 a.m. Eastern Time as the International Space Station and Dragon were flying 260 statute miles over Hawaii. That means Jasmine, Andy, Satoshi, and Constantine have completed their journey aboard the space station, wrapping up 197 days on the orbiting laboratory. By the time they splash down tomorrow, the crew will have reached 199 total days in space since their launch on August 26th. Of course, we are still monitoring here on the right side of your screen. You see Mission Control Houston, led by Flight Director Judd Freeling. This team continues to monitor the departure of Dragon until it's outside the uh, approach ellipsoid. There's another milestone we'll hit before that. That's the keep out sphere. These are two invisible boundaries around the International Space Station that teams use to monitor arriving and departing spacecraft. Once Dragon Endurance exits the approach ellipsoid, it will continue moving toward its journey home, but the teams here in Houston will no longer be in joint operations with the teams in Mission Control Hawthorne on the left side of your screen. That, will, that team will continue monitoring the uh, Dragon Endurance's uh, journey itself, along with our four crew members, crew members aboard, and the team here on the right will remain working uh, on International Space Station operations. And we're just moments away from depart burn one. This is a short burn, about 22 seconds, and we'll continue to increase the distance between the space station and Dragon Endurance. As we stand by for Depart Burn 1, teams here in Mission Control Houston continue to monitor the departure of Dragon Endurance, and I'm gonna send it back to my colleagues, Jesse and Sandra, continue to continue walking you through this process. Thanks, Leah. As Leah mentioned, we are waiting for Departure Burn 1. That is expected to be about five minutes after undocking the, un the undocking procedure begins, which is 8.25 a.m. Pacific time or 11.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and you can see on your screen a graphic of how this procedure works. We've already had Depart Burn Zero, and again, are just waiting for Depart Burn One, and that will increase the initial opening rate between Dragon and the space station. 
We are about 20 seconds away from that deep heartburn one uh, beginning. At this time, Dragon is 129 meters away from the International Space Station and continuing to get further and further away. Of course, we'll see that number grow um, following that departure burn as well. About five seconds away from that burn beginning. Standing by for confirmation that the depart burn one has begun. And we did hear that that burn has begun. Again, this burn is only 22 seconds long, so it's pretty short burn. And Dragon, SpaceX, depart burn one is complete and nominal. As a reminder, we will be deactivating the big loop following the approach ellipsoid exit. Dragon copies to part one burn is complete and uh, station from Dragon. We wish you the best of luck. Uh, for those staying on board on Expedition 71, we hope it does. Filled with laughter and fulfilling science as ours was. For Laurel, we'll see you in a couple weeks. And uh, we left you some peanut butter and tortillas in Node 1. Jaws and Satoshi, Kosha, congrats on the departure. I miss you guys already, and thanks for that very generous gift. Okay, it. You're very welcome, world. <laughs> Have a beautiful flight. Enjoy the last few hours in orbit and soft landings. Can't wait to see you guys in a couple weeks. Thanks, we're well, looking forward to seeing you soon. Miss you guys already. Hey, thanks from Dragon. Are we go to uh, come on and see us, Drake? Yes, Dragon. We're glad to have you aboard. We're going to be turning off the fasten seatbelt sign shortly, so you have that go for uh, four decimal zero one two, and we're going to take cameras external. Okay, copy, go for 4.012, and copy taking the cameras external. Thank you. Okay, so we... And on the big loop, Dragon has exited the keep-out sphere. Safe travels, Crew 7, and we'll see you at home. Dragon copies. Thanks, uh, Houston. We look forward to seeing you all shortly. And so we did hear quite a bit of communication back and forth on um, the loops there from the ground as well as between the International Space Station, uh, Laurel O'Hara, who is remaining on board for a couple more weeks, um, and then uh, NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli, who is the commander of Dragon, uh, thanking uh, Mission Control for their time in orbit and all the hard work that the folks uh, put in, as well as saying that they left maybe a secret peanut butter surprise <laughs> for Laurel on Space Station. Uh, we also did hear that Dragon exited the keep out sphere. So this keep out sphere is an imaginary sphere or a boundary, which is 200 meters in radius around the International Space Station. It's one of several safety zones set up to cover visiting vehicles, either arriving or departing the space station. Before moving into the keep out sphere, spacecraft have to be configured where they would not cross the imaginary boundary for at least four orbits, even if the spacecraft lost all maneuvering capabilities. And we are now waiting for Dragon to exit the approach ellipsoid, or the AE, which is another imaginary shape, this time a three-dimensional ellipsoid measuring four by two by two kilometers in the same family as the keep-out sphere. One of the key differences with the AE is that vehicles outside of it have to be on what we call a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. That means the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, again, even if it lost all maneuvering. So we'll listen for that call out once we hear confirmation that Dragon is outside of the AE. 
And we did also hear comms about the big loop um, being deconfigured after the approach ellipsoid is um, moved past. The big loop is a way for the crew in Hawthorne, California, which you see there on your screen, as well as Mission Control Houston, as and the crew on Space Station and the crew in Dragon can all communicate on one big loop and have communications freely flowing between them. So we call this portion integrated operations. And once we do exit the approach ellipsoid, we will end those integrated operations. And we are expecting the approach ellipsoid exit in about nine minutes or so from now. SpaceX Dragon on the cabin mic, Tom check. We have you the same. And on board Dragon, the crew is going to begin to work on getting out of their spacesuits uh, for the journey ahead. Uh, they are splashing down early tomorrow morning, so they're going to get comfortable. They do wear those spacesuits during some of the more dynamic phases of the mission, such as launch, um, as well as docking and undocking, and of course, splash down. Uh, but now that they have successfully undocked from the International Space Station at 820 Pacific, about 12 and a half minutes ago, they are able to get out of those spacesuits get comfortable, uh, maybe have a meal, and just enjoy their last few hours in orbit. Yeah, and you may have heard the core that they are going external. That means that they are giving the crew privacy on board of Dragon. And we also, unfortunately, haven't been able to get any external views of Dragon just yet because we've been in orbital nighttime. Um, so it is pretty hard to get some views when it's dark outside. Uh, but as soon as we're able to get some good views, we will definitely share them with all of you that is tuned in today. And the International Space Station is currently flying 264 statute miles over the South Pacific Ocean. And Dragon, again, undocked at 8.20 a.m. Pacific and is now 485 meters away from the International Space Station. The next major milestone that we're looking ahead towards is when Dragon exits the approach ellipsoid. That's that four kilometer by two kilometer by two kilometer um, imaginary oval around the International Space Station. So we are expecting that in about six minutes or so from now. Crew 7 spent 199 days in space with 197 days docked to the International Space Station. And during this time, they completed 3,184 orbits of the Earth, traveling more than 84 million statue miles. The crew also saw the arrival of seven visiting vehicles, including SpaceX's 28th Commercial Resupply Services mission, Northrop Grumman's 20th Commercial Resupply mission, two Russian Progress Resupply ships, 86P and 87P, two crewed SpaceX Dragon vehicles carrying the Axiom Mission 3 crew, and of course, just last week, Crew 8. They also saw the departure of seven visiting vehicles, including the Dragon for SpaceX's 29th Commercial Resupply Services mission, the Cygnus spacecraft for Northrop Grumman's 19th resupply mission, two Russian Progress resupply ships, 84P and 85P, as well as two crew Dragon spacecraft, carrying the Axiom 3 crew and Crew 6 home, as well as a Russian Soyuz vehicle for the MS-23 mission that returned NASA astronaut Frank Rubio to Earth following his record breaking mission in which he broke the record for the longest single space flight by a U.S. astronaut. And just saying that is a mouthful. So I'm <laughs> sure this crew is ready to be home after a very successful mission. We saw a lot of visiting vehicles, a lot of space station traffic. And in addition to that, they worked on hundreds of science experiments during their six month mission. And as we continue to monitor uh, Dragon exiting the approach ellipsoid, uh, I'm going to toss it back over to my colleague, Leah Cheshire, who's going to walk us through the next steps from Mission Control Houston. Over to you, Leah. 
Thanks, Sandra. Now over 15 minutes since undocking this morning, and you mentioned science experiments. Let's talk about one of those. Over the last 23 years, crews aboard the International Space Station have completed thousands of scientific and educational experience experiments, and of course, Crew 7 added to that number during their six-month mission. One of those studies was CIFER, which stands for the Complement of Integrated Protocols for Human Exploration Research. Of course, you know we're looking for longer journeys to the moon and Mars, so scientists are examining how extended time in space affects the human body. Astronauts on missions of various lengths can participate in an integrated set of studies that monitors their health before, during, and after missions. Results could play a pivotal role in ensuring the safety, health, and success of astronauts on deep space exploration missions. Cypher began with Crew 7 and is continuing now with Crew 8, which just launched and arrived to the space station last week. As you mentioned, we are standing by for Dragon to exit the approach ellipsoid. That's the two by two by four kilometer uh, invisible sphere around the space station, which we use to monitor arriving and departing spacecraft. That is monitored by the team in Mission Control Houston. And once they exit, we will be out of joint operations. Of course, this team continues to stay in the room and monitor all things space station 365 days a year. After joint operations are over, we do transition out of the big loop. This is the loop used for communications between all parties involved in the arrival and departure of Dragon. That means the Space Station, Dragon, Mission Control Houston, and Mission Control Hawthorne all on the same loop for easy and streamlined communications. We will take that down once they are out of this vicinity of the Space Station. And we previously heard uh, Jasmine Mogbelli testing out the Dragon communication loops to ensure we had good comms there and we did receive that confirmation. Jasmine Mugbelli, while aboard the International Space Station, conducted one spacewalk with her colleague, Laurel O'Hara, who we heard some words from uh, just shortly after Dragon's departure this morning. Again, that departure at 10.20 a.m. Central Time, 11.20 a.m. Eastern. Their spacewalk lasted six hours and 42 minutes. It was the only spacewalk conducted for crew members on this spacecraft. Again, standing by for Dragon Endurance's departure from the approach ellipsoid. This is the third flight, and therefore the third return to Earth for Dragon Endurance. It first flew on Crew 3 in November 2021. Then later again, almost a year later, Crew 5 launched in October 2022. And of course, for Crew 7, who is coming back to Earth today, August 2023. Crew 7 was the first crew in which all four seats were occupied by a member of a different nationality or a different partner country. Jasmine Mugbelli is our NASA astronaut aboard, joined by Andreas Mogensen of ESA, the European Space Agency. Satoshi Furukawa is from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, and Konstantin Borisov comes to us from Roscosmos. It was the first flight for Jasmine and Konstantin, and the second flight for both Andreas and Satoshi. And just a reminder that after we enter the approach, after we exit the approach ellipsoid today, uh, we will wrap up our coverage on this broadcast and webcast. However, we will not be leaving you hanging. We're going to continue with some mission audio coverage all the way through the flight home for Crew 7. You can find that on NASA.gov and by searching our mission audio coverage on YouTube.
Again, we're standing by for approach ellipsoid exit. Teams here in Mission Control Houston continuing to monitor the departure of Crew 7 and our four crew members as they prepare to rejoin the population of Earth tomorrow morning. With that, I'm going to send it back to my colleagues in Hawthorne, Jesse and Sandra, to continue walking us through Dragon's departure. Thanks, Leah. Again, we are waiting for Dragon to exit the approach ellipsoid or the AE, which is another imaginary shape. This is a three-dimensional ellipsoid measuring four by two by two kilometers in the same family as the keep out sphere. One of the key differences with the AE is that the vehicles outside of it have to be on what we call a 24 hour safe free drift trajectory. That means that the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours. Again, even if it lost all maneuvering. So we are just waiting for that call out for confirmation that Dragon is outside of the AE. As we continue to stand by for that call out that Dragon has exited the approach ellipsoid, if you're just joining us, Dragon undocked from the International Space Station 21 minutes ago at 8.20 a.m. And we did just hear that confirmation that Dragon is now outside of the approach ellipsoid. That was the call we were waiting on. Again, that's a, another imaginary shape. It's a three-dimensional ellipsoid measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers in the same family as the keep out sphere, which was exited earlier this morning. One of the key differences with the approach ellipsoid is that vehicles outside it and Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground. Uh, you have a go for your preparations for crew off duty at your discretion. We're ready to support in case you'd like to talk to surgeon and uh, a reminder to set your audio destinations to ground. Dragon on Dragon to ground, uh, we copy all, and now we're going to configure for crew off duty. Good repack, Dragon. And those words from the ground up to NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli, letting them know that now that they're out of the approach ellipsoid, they can get configured for a crew off-duty period as they uh, wait splash down early tomorrow morning. The crew is going to get out of their spacesuits and get comfortable for the remainder of their journey. So again, the crew is now out of the approach ellipsoid, which means that the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, again, even if it lost all maneuvering, and we call that a safe free drift trajectory. And with that, now that NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli, ESA astronaut Andy Mogison, JAXA astronaut Satoshi Furukawa, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov have departed the International Space Station, it will take them about 18 and a half hours until they make their way back down to Earth. The crew is currently doffing their spacesuits, or they may have actually uh, completely gotten out of their spacesuits to settle in for the flight home. And today, Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida at 5.50 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning or 2.50 a.m. Pacific time on March 12th, followed by the crew getting picked up by sea by one of SpaceX's recovery vessels. As they rest up, our teams here will continue to keep an eye on the weather to ensure a safe return to Earth for Dragon and our Crew 7 astronauts. And though our coverage here in Hawthorne is wrapping up for this morning, we will turn it over to the NASA team in Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew-7 mission. Our friends at the Johnson Space Center will provide continuous live audio-only coverage along Crew-7's journey home until we rejoin from Hawthorne approximately one hour prior to splashdown. You can find the audio only link by visiting nasa.gov slash live and clicking the mission audio link or searching for NASA mission audio live feed on YouTube at go.nasa.gov slash live ISS. Meanwhile, we will rejoin for live visual coverage starting roughly one hour prior to splashdown. And as always, you can find mission updates on X at, at NASA at SpaceX and on the web at nasa.gov. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.